What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here where we continue our discussion of the amazing Wasabi Wallet. And now having showed you how to install it, how to send and receive regular payments, and now that we've went into the theory and the application of the Chaumi and CoinJoin transaction, well, peers, let's do it. Let's actually construct and sign one of these amazing uh, technologies, one of these amazing Chalmian uh, signatures. Uh, so we have here our Wasabi wallet on testnet, because we're well, testing this, and we have a couple transactions histories in there. And uh, also we do have a couple coins selected here. Uh, one is a import from Eclair, uh, one is a change from an export to Eclair after we have imported it. So again, here labeling really important. And one is from a faucet where I just got more coins because you can never have enough testnet Bitcoin, clearly. And you will realize that there's here also a coin join uh, tab in the beautiful user interface. And here again, we see uh, a similar history here of all these UTXOs. And there is, of course, also the privacy tab, which shows you the anonymity set. It shows you in the chain of digital signatures that represent this UTXO, how many equal amount value inputs and outputs were there actually. And for, of course, here it is one. <laughs> anonymity set sucks. It's pretty much non-existent. It's a really uniquely identifiable input uh, or potential input uh, that we can use for one of these coin joint transactions. Down here, we can either select them all. We can either select all that are private, which of course currently is none, or we could select all that are not private. And that means that they have an anonymity set of less than 50. Okay, So an anon set of 50 is rather acceptable. Uh, of course, still not uh, perfect because uh, you could have an anonymity set of 9,000, which would be cool, of course. <laughs> we also see down here that there's a minimum uh, of 0 0.03001 Bitcoin required for this entire coin join, okay? This is a tough value to get correct if there even is a way of making this a correct number. Because if the minimum would be too high, let's say one Bitcoin, then this would exclude a lot of peers who don't have as many Bitcoin uh, to use in their coin join. Uh, so then these peers just would not have any privacy, which of course sucks. However, if this number is too low, say 10,000 Satoshis, then this means that we are generating many, many UTXOs, which is not good to the common space of blockchain. And uh, therefore, there are high fees, not just for us today, but especially for all the full nodes that have to keep the list of these UTXOs uh, in uh, memory, right? So this is something uh, that is rather tricky. And it depends also a lot on the liquidity of the coin joints. And uh, yeah, so basically, we can get right into it. Right now, we are in the phase of registration. And here, switching to the white, uh, to the framework again, we see that we are in this early stage. So right now, we are connected as Alice, who can register the inputs and the proofs, plus, uh, which are, of course, here, these inputs, right, and a digital signature that prove that we actually own them. And then further, uh, we can provide a blinded coin join output, and the change output, which are being generated here in the receive tab, but done completely automatically. And in the first step, we provide this to the tumbler, who checks if we have enough inputs, if they are unspent, and if we actually control them with a signature. And then it signs this blinded signature, this blinded coin join output, right? Sends that back to us. We reconnect uh, to Bob and sign the now unblinded coin join output which we then send back to the coordinator. And ultimately then the coordinator builds up the entire transaction, sends it back to us, and we sign it with the signatures of these UTXOs that we have registered, okay? And then we send this, our signature back. The coordinator builds up the entire transaction, checks if everything is valid, 
combines all the signatures and ultimately then broadcasts it to the network. Uh, and Pierce, this is going to be a really uh, swift process and we will have to stay vigilant and watch exactly what is happening, uh, but there will be recurring rounds. So we will use this more coins input of 0 0.375, which gives us sufficiently uh, many uh, attempts of doing recurring coin join rounds. So we will not just partake in one giant coin join transaction, but actually in several recurringly. Okay, so th then we can uh, just watch how this happens. And the anonymity set here, the number of registered peers is two in general. Uh, so here we had, of course, many, many, uh, 50 or something. And uh, we will only do one with two other peers. So, uh, or sorry, two peers in general. One are we, and the other one is, I, I do believe, the zero link Wasabi uh, backend itself, so that we can have swift testing methods. Okay. Uh, and yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, there is already one other peer registered, uh, so they are waiting just for us. Uh, so let's not keep anyone waiting. Let's type in our password right here. And now we can enqueue our selected UTXO. Okay, and again, that is everything here in this first step. Now we will press enqueue. We now have queued this. We have confirmed, uh, with connection is now confirmed. Now down here we have two out of two. Now this is being sent uh, to the, now we have our output registered with the blind signature, okay, the, current, the coin is currently in the output registration phase, which means we have the blind signature corresponding to this. Now the coin is signed uh, by us, by Alice, and already backed by the coordinator, and we are in the next round already, okay? So we are waiting here for the confirmation. We've received 0 0.32 as a change, we have received 0 0.054 as our coin join output, okay? So this here is the equal amount. This is now a zero link mixed coin, uh, which is 0 0.054. And this now has an anonymity set of two. Why? Because there, are, there was one other peer joining his coins with us. And we have also received a change of 0 0.32. Remember, we had 0 0.37 and, the, and we get the 0 0.05 uh, back. The change is already queued for the next coin join and the output is being registered. It is now signed by the coordinator and we will soon receive another 0 0.05077, okay? And the change output, again, is a unique identifier and we are now already queuing this change output again for the next coin join round. And this will continue until we dequeue our change output. Okay, so we will have recurring coin join rounds, as many as either we stop the process manually and withdraw our uh, signature here and tell the Tumblr to no longer include us in the entire coin join transaction, or until we reach the point where our change output is below the minimum required. Now you will also see that we now have done the third coin join, again with an anonymity set of two. However, all these amounts are again different. Why is that? Because there, we are above the minimum of 0 0.03001. And then we use that amount which the smallest peer has. So we know now that although we had, uh, start, we started with 0 0.37 uh, queued, our peer only had 0 0.054 uh, registered as his output. And then in the next round, the peer had even less of 0 0.0507 Bitcoin queued. And in the third round, it had further even less again of 0 0.047. So it seems like uh, that the peer has the same UTXO, which he repeatedly used uh, and started with 0 
then because of the transaction fees and the fees paid to the coordinator to the tumbler uh, the our the lowest denomination of this coin join transaction uh, was uh, then you know getting smaller and smaller and smaller and as you see these are happening in rapid pro pro progression precisely because there are only two peers being registered which of course means that we only have an anonymity set of two. Now let's stop this process here and dequeue um, our coins. Is it happening? I hope so. And then we can select one of these UTXOs here and enqueue this selected UTXO. So now we re-coin join a UTXO that was already part of a zero wing, right, of, of, of one of these coin join rounds. It currently has a anonymity set of two. And now when we go for the next round, uh, then we will increase this anonymity set even further. So we are now connected. The output is registered and sent to the tumbler. Now the tumbler has signed this output and the entire transaction and will broadcast it. And which is, where is it now? Let's find it. Anonymity set of two, 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 two. This was here again, the change output. So we no longer have that. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much how it goes. These output, these coin join rounds will continue uh, as long as we have sufficient funds that are still above the minimum or when we dequeue these coins. And we can continuously re-coin join uh, our, uh, our coins until we reach a sufficiently high anonymity set with recurring rounds. And this is literally how easy it is. We have to check mark the coins that we want to use. We have to type in our password and we have to press NQ the selected coins for coin joints. And all this fancy cryptography magic happens in the background, away from you as a user. It's nice to understand how it works. Of course, it is tricky to understand, but ultimately the user interface is this simple. Uh, so, Pierce, uh, this has been uh, it here for, again, the show about the Wasabi wallet. We will continue exploring this wallet and a bit more into detail on how you can further increase your anonymity set and some edge cases, like how you can get your UTXO banned uh, from, the, from partaking in this Chaumian coin draw. So, Pierce, the wallet just keeps on chugging and keeps on registering new outputs and keeps on increasing my anonymity on testnet. Yes, I got, I got completely anonymous, or pretty much anonymous, a fake money. Perfect. <laughs> Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here, to get here today again and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.